Hello everyone, I'm Imdi Nazmul Hassan and welcome to another hands-on antenna measurement tutorial. This video is about pigtail extension cable and quantifying its insertion loss. These pigtail cables are basically a type of crucial cable called RG316. These innocent looking guys are quite lossy at high frequency. In fact, they can only support up to 3 GHz. In this video, you are going to find out how much insertion loss does a pigtail provide in dB per centimeter. Pigtail extension cables are used when we cannot directly solder a semiconductor on the antenna or other microwave devices. Sometimes antennas are fabricated on fragile substrate materials such as glasses, textile and flexible plastic sheet that wouldn't provide enough mechanical support to the semiconductor. In those cases, we prefer using pigtail extension and directly solder the cable to the antenna without any semiconductor. Since pigtail cables are extension and are not part of the original antenna, they will introduce an unwanted loss while connected to the antenna. And this loss might sometimes degrade the original performance of the antenna. Therefore, during the measurement process, it is essential to separately quantify the insertion loss of the pigtail extension cables so that we can deduct this loss from the overall loss of the DOT or device under test. So the next question is how can we measure the insertion loss of the pigtail extension cable? We can connect two pigtail extension cables back to back in this way. The total length of this pair of this connected cable is 40 cm. If we connect the two ends of this cable with a two-port vector network analyzer and measure the magnitude of S21, the magnitude of S21 is what is the insertion loss in this case. Ideally, a lossless pigtail cable would provide 0 dB insertion loss. However, ideal things don't exist, so there should be some losses and we're going to find out how much insertion loss this pigtail provides. To use VNA or Vector Network Analyzer for measurement, we have to calibrate it first. Calibration would remove the effect of the cables connected to the VNA ports and shifts the measurement planes right at the terminals of the device under test or DOT in this case at the two terminals of the pigtail cable. So we are going to use this Andrichu MS2034A VNA for the measurement for the insertion loss of this pigtail cable. To calibrate this VNA, we need a calibration kit or cal kit in short. We will follow SOLT calibration method. If you don't know what is SOLT method, please watch my another tutorial of VNA calibration given in the description. The calcate has this open load and short calcate and a 50 ohm load and a through calcate. Now let's begin the calibration process. Before beginning, make sure that this is under VNA mode. To check it, press shift and mode. And you can see there are a few options. This device can work as a VNA spectrum analyzer, power meter, and interference analyzer. Make sure you select vector network analyzer. And then we have to check the sweep option. Press shift and sweep. And make sure run and continuous are selected. Now we are ready for the calibration process. From the keyboard, press the shift and then calibration. And make sure you are selecting two port under this cal type option because this VNA has two ports and we're gonna calibrate both of the ports. Once you press it, the VNA will automatically initiate calibration process and ask you to connect the calibration kit with its ports. Now it is asking to connect the open cal kit to the RF out port. So basically we have two ports here and this yellow color is the RF out and this one is RF in. So we're going to connect the open a cal kit to the RF out terminal. I mean this terminal. 
So we already connected our coaxial cable with this port. So um, you're going to connect the open cal kit at this end of this coaxial cable. So we have connected the open cal kit to this end. And this one is the RF out port. So you're going to press enter from the keyboard. And you will see the VNA will automatically do some background processing. You have to wait for a while. Now it is asking to connect the short CalKit to this RF out terminal. So at this time, we connected the short CalKit to this end. And again, we have to press enter from the keyboard and the VNA will do some background processing. And this time it is asking to connect loads to both of the ports of this VNA. That means RF out and RF in. So as you can see, these are the two ports, RF out and RF in. And we are gonna connect the loads to these two ports. So we connected the load CalKit to this RF out and 50 ohm load to another terminal that is RF in. Now we are going to press enter button. And now the VNA will do some background processing like the previous ones. And this time it is asking to connect the through CalKit so through is a basically a short-circuited um, CalKit. That means it would connect the two ports of the VNA. So this is the through CalKit. So basically it connects the two ports of the VNA. So it short-circuits them. So that is how the true CalKit is connected between these two ports of this VNA. So we are going to press the enter button like the previous ones. It takes a little bit amount of time. All right. Now, once the calibration is done, you can see the S21 uh, line, this yellow line. Basically, this is the S21 log magnitude line is right at the zero dB line. That means it is calibrated now. All right. So the two ports of the VNA are connected back to back. So that means the signal is transferred from one port to the another port without any attenuation. So a little bit amount of tweaking is necessary. Uh, you're going to check the sweep. You're going to select continuous and then run. And now the red text would disappear. Now this VNA is ready for the measurement. Press this measurement button and then see the S11 log magnitude. And it takes a little bit amount of time to show the plot. So this is the reflection coefficient of the connected uh, coax cables of, between these two ports of this VNA. It's around 17 dB. And if you see the S21 log magnitude, the line is basically located along the zero dB line. This time we have connected the device under test. That means our pigtail extension cables. As you can see, this is connected between the two ports of the VNA. And we're going to measure the S21 log magnitude, which is basically minus 3.13 dB at 2.4 gigahertz. So that means these um, 40 centimeter uh, pigtail extension cable, which is also known as RG316 coax cable, is providing us around minus 3 dB insertion loss for 40 centimeter. And this is the phase of this pigtail extension cable. The phase has a little bit of ripple, um, but overall the profile is almost linear. So. Uh, we can say that there is very less sig significant dispersion in this transmission line. But there is loss. As you can see, minus 3 dB is quite a big loss. 
I should say, for 40 centimeter pigtail extension cable, it's really, really very, very high. Anyway, you can basically cut off this loss by reducing the length of this pigtail extension cable. You can cut it short, and this way you can basically reduce the losses. But remember that pigtail extension cables are flexible and they provide uh, this functionality of basically uh, keeping your device under test, which is very fragile, um, safe, so that you can bend your cable and keep the device under test stationary. So if you keep it short, you cannot do that. So I hope that you have understood how we can measure the insertion loss of the pigtail extension cable. And uh, you can see a little bit of demo here. I have connected this pigtail extension cable with this uh, microwave device. This is basically uh, just a, a transmission line trace uh, fabricated on a piece of glass material, which is very, very fragile. And that is why I'm not using any SMA connector. Rather, I'm directly soldering this pigtail cable on this glass uh, material. I hope that uh, you have understood how to measure the insertion loss of the pigtail cable. If you're benefited from this video, press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep watching other antenna engineering and electromagnetics video tutorials in my YouTube channel. There are simulations, measurements, research ideas, all kinds of videos related to electromagnetics and, and antenna engineering in my YouTube channel, Tensor Bundle. Thank you very much.